All right, so at this point what I've got is this project that has, we've edited a bit with CSS, some of the style and such. Some of the style of uh, CSS, I've edited it and now I played a little bit with some of the margins and such. The alignment of my elements looks a little better. I'm going to fix one thing that still bothers me a little bit, and then I'm going to work on the, perhaps trying to work with the, um, the map feature, which isn't quite behaving. So I'll fix one more CSS thing, and then we will um, work on the map. I'm just going to reload it here in... Um, I'm going to reload it in the web browser. Now, I forgot to say when, when I had said about uh, building it again. Uh, for me, I was trying to build it in Node. I was trying to do Cordova run uh, Android, and then it would say no device available. Well, I have the web browser kind of taking over control of the device, so it didn't let me compile my device and install it. It didn't let me compile my app and install it to the device. So I had to turn off Chrome completely. That freed the resource up. And then I was able to do Cordova run Android, and it put the latest version of my project on the device. So if yours was giving you trouble like that, I forgot to say, turn off Chrome, and then compile it and build it, and then it'll show up. So I've got the latest version with my last edits running on my device. You know, it took, as always, 54 seconds on mine. So this is the latest version of it. It's got all the customization that we did a moment ago. Um, what I want to do, a little bit more CSS customization, is... When I go over to the computer's screen and load up one of these pages here, PC101 for example, we saw this a moment ago that it shows the content, but then it's got the text that runs behind the back icon. I want to target that up there. And that also happens on PC201 and PC301. The text that I've got up there is rather big and therefore it's getting uh, cut off. So there's several ways to address it, but here's one way. I want to target that via CSS so that only that gets changed. Whenever we're working with CSS, we either have the ability to edit something uh, by the element, the CSS that already exists, or hopefully to invent our own. So I'm going to try to do a little sleuthing first. Is there something I can edit here that's already built in and then I'm done? If it's not, then I have to write my own custom CSS. That's not a problem either, but I have to go on a different route. So what I would do again is I would pull up the select an element, hover around a little bit, I kind of see that, click on it. That's taking me back to what I did previously. UI header, UI title. Well, in this case it wouldn't work to edit this it would work literally if I change that, yes, but then that applies to everything because it's all it's all connected to the same rule. So no, I wouldn't change that. So uh, what it looks like I need to do is create a CSS rule that will apply just to that element. Actually, that element and the other two, PC201, PC301. So that'd be perfect for a class. Breaking down what what this gives me over here in the HTML, there's h1 class UI title, role, etc. And so what if I added another unique class to the heading 1? I can go back to my HTML, no problem, and add another class. And I can test that here. So I'm going to say I'm going to add another class to that. You can edit your HTML here as well if you didn't know. You can double click and start editing that as well. But what I want to edit is here on title, uh, on class, it's got the UI title. If you double click, it lets you edit it. I want to add another, um, another class here. And then you always have to figure out what good names to use here. You're going to forget them. So uh, we'll call this, um, I don't know, uh, H1PC. And I'm going to write that down because I'm going to forget right away. 
H1 PC. You can press enter. So now what I've got here is a brand new class attached to this H1 that already had an existing class. And so now when I go to the top right to add a brand new rule, it seems to know. And it writes it for me. This is cool. Okay, h1 dot ui dash title dot h1 pc. So it knows that there's an h1 element here with a class. So there's the dot ui title that's built into jQuery Mobile. And the one I just created, h1 pc, then gets attached to it with the dot. So this is saying the reason this looks different than some of the other ones where there's a space is that this is a uh, this is a class that is dependent on the title that is dependent on being attached to a heading one, um, which is what I'm seeing here. Class. If I'm going to have two classes within the quotes, that's the syntax. They're chained together with the dot. Previously, when we've had these that are not chained together, that they have the space right here, there's a space here, that's because more likely it's going to be you've got a class with an element, and then that is inside of another thing with another class. So they're separated. They're two separate elements. There's an article element, perhaps, and an h1 element. And that's why there's a space between them in the CSS. The, the one that it's suggesting to me right here is no spaces because it's two classes being applied to one element. Two classes in one element as opposed to two classes in two elements. Yes, it is confusing, but with uh, practice it makes more sense. And that's why I'm liking these dev tools because, again, it's filling in a lot of it for me. It's helping me out a lot. So uh, along the same lines, I'm going to target that element, font size. Uh, let's see if we take it back to 1M. It's no longer cutting off there. That's good. So it looks good there. It doesn't look good on the other ones. Anyone guessing why it doesn't look the same on these other pages? The rule is not applied to them yet. This one on the PC301 does not have class UI title H1 PC. That's why it doesn't apply this brand new rule to the other two screens. Those other two screens don't have the HTML, the appropriate HTML, which was inside of the class space h1 pc capital p and now it's smaller so obviously i'm going to need to do this permanently in the project in a moment i'm still going toward it but uh, the heading one now has a second class and then this class uh, has been edited the size of it is more uh, manageable it's not cutting off the edges that's good I'm still going to have the problem because of uh, it's overlapping with the the button. But one way around that is I can add margin left, and I can say, well, what about if we put in 25px or more? 75. Margin dash left, 75 pixels, and now it's not on top of the button anymore, or behind the button. Now the problem is that if I go check my other screen to see how that looks, well, it's no longer overlapping just like I thought, but then it's still cutting off because that's such a large text up there.
So I can either f continue to fine-tune the CSS, employ some other uh, techniques and such, or another another uh, tactic is, well, after doing some beta testing, maybe actually I can cut that that line itself. Maybe I don't need that to say advanced PC classes. Maybe if it just says advanced PC, advanced PCs. Um, that keeps my font the nice size that I'm liking, 1M. That also doesn't overlap it with the button, and it won't have the ellipses. Um, it won't have the ellipses. So I can edit that quickly in the in the HTML there to get a sense of it and it looks good. So I'm going to save that CSS before I lose it because these developer tools are ephemeral. They will go away if you refresh or close your browser. So make sure you save that. I'm going to add that to my to my Kodika file after the the the, the more generic uh, UI header UI title. I'll add it right there. It comes in with my um, with my new rules, but that was only half of the of the issue, wasn't it? I needed to uh, write to the correct CSS rule and apply it to the right element in the HTML. So now I need to go back to my index.html file, find the place uh, where to apply this, and then apply the h1 pc class. Uh, so I'm going to open index. And down, way down on line 292. is intermediate, advanced, and basic, 282. So I'm going to add to the heading one, heading one tag class equals h1pc. And I'll add the same thing to the other two, intermediate PC classes and advanced PC classes. And while I'm here, I'll, I'll also uh, edit the, the text of those heading ones a bit. All right, so I'm going to switch gears in a moment, but any questions so far on any of this that we've done about the, uh, the developer tools here or the CSS or anything? All right, what I want to deal with is the map. It's pretty odd because 
if I open the DIR file directly into the web browser, it works. It's the exact same code in my app. When I try to launch it as an app, it never loads up. So we're going to see about trying to figure this out logically to see how this to see what what we're missing perhaps. Um, the code itself uh, is that HTML5 compliant code. I thought that part of the issue could have been um, this uh, this meta tag um, that shows up. We even commented it out. Remember, there's that content security policy which was disallowing some JavaScript to work, so we commented it out for the moment. It still doesn't seem to to accomplish anything. And so this is a matter probably of uh, something with JavaScript and such. And I'm going to continue to use the Chrome dev tools to, um, to, to kind of troubleshoot this. I'm probably going to refer back to the Cordova um, documentation to, to kind of help myself figure this out, but we're going to now be looking at the console. Remember, there's the console tab of the dev tools, which is where we look when we're dealing with JavaScript and other errors and such. So if you switch your tab up there to console, um, it's then going to uh, give you some feedback depending on what you're doing. So I think we had some, if I try to customize, yeah, so you see, uh, I, add, I did the customize with a name, and then internally I had some JavaScript going on a while ago that it would uh, capture that name, put it in local storage, and just show it, console log, remember, console.log to output some, some console info. So uh, we're going to use this to try to figure out what's going on with that map. So one useful thing to know about this is that um, we're going to get all of this feedback. And sometimes we'll want to clear the feedback, clear the console, because there's already a lot, a lot to look at. So once in a while, I'm going to clear my console log, and it's just that little cross out icon, click that and it goes away. And this is a live um, this is a live uh, command prompt here in that you can write valid JavaScript and have it um, render. It doesn't show up in the um, screencast for some reason, but on, on my device here it popped up hello, just like a regular old alert. So you can actually feed this commands, write JavaScript in here, and see it processed, uh, hopefully in the screencast, but in this case it didn't. So the point of this is we're going to use this console to try to figure out what's going on with this map. So sometimes just thinking aloud about this is very helpful because that's what I'm about to do. Um, I'm, I load up the, the directions screen. I'm seeing this feedback of Cordova is ready, but that's coming from some built-in console via logger. I think that's just um, I think that's just something built into to Chrome so that we can control this um, this app in the browser. So I'm not exactly sure where that's coming from. I think it's just the built-in uh, Cordova device that fires. Uh, device ready. Uh, and then we get that message about no content security policy. Well, that's the one we commented out. And we never get any any result from from loading up that screen. So that leads me to believe, okay, is is there is the is the device uh, is the API not available? Is the is the geolocation feature not available? So I'm gonna go back to notepad and edit the dir file because that's where our javascript is at um, we're going to edit our dir file we're 
refresh our memory what's in it. There's uh, like 100 lines of code or so starting on line 29 going down to 114 that makes the actual map work. So let's break it down again from the beginning. How does it actually work? Uh, we start at the bottom and go up at about line 105. There's some jQuery that says dollar document dot live page before show ID map and then an anonymous function. In short, what this is saying is um, once the element we've attached to the element this uh, we're waiting for this element of ID map. Once the document is live before it shows up on screen, try to get the the geolocation. We've got an ID here, section, ID map. So if that element exists before it fully shows up, uh, if it exists, then then try to get the geolocation. So perhaps something's happening here that um, is preventing that from showing. So my first step to see about uh, how can we fix this is I would look up is this dot live still relevant in our in our modern app because this code is from an example that's at least a year and a half old it might be two years old by now so things change we, we had jQuery one point whatever and now we're at one point whatever we're gonna be at two point whatever so maybe this dot live isn't really the best way to do it anymore so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look that up I'm gonna do a search I'm gonna grab that line of code to see if this page before show, this dot live stuff, is it still even relevant? Uh, I'm going to preface that with Cordova. Let's see if if that is still something that we can do with Cordova. Maybe there's a maybe there's a, a solution. We should do it in a different way. Let's see what we get. triggering of this event is deprecated as of jQuery Mobile 1.4. It will no longer be triggered in 1.6. The replacement for page before show is the page container widgets page container before show event. In jQuery 1.4.0, the two events are identical except for their name and the fact that page container before show is triggered on the page container, whereas page before show is triggered on the page. Hmm. Let's see if simply replacing that does anything. page container before show. I have to compile this, I believe, because, well, let me do one thing first. Um, just load it as a plain old HTML file. So this is the latest version of it. It seems to work as a plain old HTML file, but I care for it to work as an app. And then unfortunately I have to recompile it. So I'm going to shut down my Chrome stuff because it will capture my, my device and it won't let me compile to the device. So I'm going to close down, um, I guess just to be safe, even that one. I'm just going to be safe and close down all of Chrome and then run it. So sometimes code changes, code evolves. For whatever reason, page container before show <clears throat> is the preferred way. Page before show has been deprecated. So that term means, you know, it's been, uh, it's not as important as it used to be. And it said that eventually with jQuery Mobile 1.6, it won't even exist. So we're between those transitions at the moment. And it seems that with the current project that we've got and the particular devices, the, the device that I have at least, some people said it did work for you. 
um, we can do some beta testing. So if this previously did work for you, I'd be curious to find out what happens if you change your code like me and run it, and does it still work? It still does work? Okay, very cool. Let's see if it works on mine. Okay, at this point it's it's been built and it's put on my device. It's safe to bring Chrome back. I will do that so that you can see what I'm doing. Maybe give it a moment. didn't seem to quite do it, but we might not need to, since this is, this is an app, it came from a web app, since it's an app, perhaps we should be focused on the device ready type of event handlers. If it worked for you, uh, very good. If it didn't, let's see about trying to figure this out a bit more. So maybe if I use the device ready, event handler um, see how that works so I am going to comment out for the moment that whole block right there so I'm gonna comment out that and I'm instead instead I'm gonna use the um, the whole on device ready nomenclature so to remind myself what that looks like I'm gonna load up the JavaScript file, kodika.extra.javascript, because I've got an example of it here at the top. This is what I'm talking about. So in the uh, JavaScript file, we've got document.addEventListener, waiting for the event device ready. Run the anonymous function, or run the function, the callback function on device ready, and then device ready is defined like that. So I'm thinking I'm going to copy that and the function um, definition and then uh, tweak it to see if I can get that to work to get the geo coordinates. So I'm going to grab all of that, copying lines 3 to 8 from my JavaScript file. Go back to my DIR file, and instead of that line that I commented out, I'll paste in what I took. I'm still waiting for an event, the event of device ready. Device ready is supposed to fire once Cordova APIs are available, such as camera, contacts, geolocation, etc. So I'm going to say if I do get a device ready, I'm going to use um, geo ready callback function, and this will be geo ready here. Don't need that navigator splash screen. My log, I'll make it say geolocation is ready. More importantly, I want it to try to grab that location. So I'm going to copy that line 106, which is supposed to work the old way. Let's see if it works this new way. So 
So in theory, if I do load the, the, the Cordova APIs, then it should then try to pull the geo coordinates. So I'm going to need to compile that again. Now if I try to use it as a plain old HTML file, now it won't work, definitely, because I'm trying to use um, Cordova features. So I'm going to shut down Chrome, compile it, And then again here we'll test, we'll see if it works on mine, hopefully, and then we'll see if it works on people's that it used to work. So you guys can help be my guinea pigs and beta testers. If all else fails, at the worst, we can have a, a fail-safe about, well, geolocation is not available, so therefore just disable this whole feature. Obviously that's the, that's the, the scorched earth solution. But if a device doesn't have geolocation, what's the point of trying to show a map? You will not be able to pull a real live map. Geolocation is ready appears, which at the very least tells me that device is ready. If device is ready, then it would say ge geolocation is ready, and then it, now it's trying to do getting the coordinates So for those of you that it worked, what does it do now? Does it still work, or does it not pull the map in anymore? No more map? You didn't change it. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Navigator.geolocation. I get that standard HTML and that standard phone gap, or Cordova. Let me confirm. navigator.geolocation.get current position like we've always had. We've got the success callback, the error callback, and the options like we've always had. The callback that is passed, the current, the callback that is passed, the current position. The callback that executes if an error occurs, the geolocation options. Maybe we need to put in some options.
So sometimes things don't work out exactly, and that's why you do like what I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure it out, troubleshoot it, try different options, seeing examples, copying the code, testing it again, maybe going toward a solution. So I'm trying to figure it out myself. I could, of course, go over to Stack Exchange, maybe poke around there, see what they have. Um, if they don't have something there, then I could uh, ask the question. But I know for myself, um, when I when I work on my own apps, I try on my own first to see if I can figure it out because I feel I learn the answer better that way. I'm trying to troubleshoot it myself. I'm thinking about how can this be fixed. I'm, you know, trying to work it out logically and such. And hopefully, if I get to the answer, great, it'll stick. Um, if I still am having that trouble, then I'll go start to look for more solutions online. Maybe I'll find the answer and get it done. Right now, I'm just going to see this is a possibility. Well, what if uh, I'm just going to have this on this this kind of on success callback? See if I get any feedback. Cost function required as for Oops. So I'm taking a different approach here where I'm trying to see, well, maybe something's working, kind of. Uh, if you recall, I've got the navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition. There's either a location success or a location error or options. I'll look at options also in a moment because at least I'm seeing that the device ready is loading up. So it's getting to that line that says console.log geolocation is ready. That something's happening at the get current position. So I've changed my location error a bit so that I get an obvious pop-up that says no geolocation. Yes? Hmm. You're saying this, the ad, of, ad event listener. This Don't get an alert on this.
So I noticed here in the documentation, I'm going to try something here, there's options. There's a few options we can add to trying to get the position. Uh, so the example up here, navigator.geolocation, blah, 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 on success, on error, and then we can put some options, such as maximum age, timeout, and I'm trying this one, enable high accuracy, provides a hint that the application needs the best possible results. By default, the device attempts to retrieve a position using network-based methods. Setting this property to true tells the framework to use more accurate methods, such as satellite positioning. So over here on my code, I'm trying that. Location success, location error, enable hierarchy. I'm going to try that first on the on device ready. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to try that on the on the first one that it, that worked. The um, the live dot uh, the live uh, page, page container before show. I'll try this one first. And also I've noticed I don't need to, apparently I don't need to shut down Chrome completely, I just need to um, close the inspect window. That'll free up the resource uh, for me to build to it. I I see it doesn't show on the device on the preview there, but I see at the top of my of my Android screen I see the little um, the little icon that says there's a um, location services active. So it looks like it's capturing the location but not quite displaying it. Alright, so I'll try one more thing and then I'll try changing tactics. I'm going to try that high accuracy as part of the original one that worked. I'm going to bring back the original document.live. I'm going to keep the page container before show because um, that's the current code. Um, the other was deprecated. And then I've added, I've copied and pasted, but I've added the enable high, high accuracy to the project, and then I'll see if that uh, helps.
And because it's always good to get a second opinion, I'm also going to see about running that on this other device that I have. This has got Android 4.1 on it, I think. I'm going to try to load that up. I won't be able to do the screencasting because the screencasting works on Android 4.4 and up. So my 4.1 will not show up on screen, but I'll see if this works. No, same thing. I get the icon that it seems to be accessing the GPS, but it just doesn't show up on screen. So, well, let's take a, another little break. Uh, I'm going to try a couple of other things, and then if not, that doesn't work, then we've got other tactics that we can try. But this works for some people and not for others, so I want to get a second opinion on another one of my devices. It needs a little setup, and then we can figure out what to do, because it seems to work for some people with the code as is, and that's great, and not for others. So we don't want to have that, um, you know, negative, bad stars and negative reviews because the thing that ad that this app is advertised as having doesn't work. So we might have to deal with it in a different way. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, eight. Uh, we're back at eight uh, twenty-three, and then we'll go on. <laughs>